Hello, welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on March nine, twenty twenty one. I have a good friend. We don't get to see each other a lot,、uh, but we were、uh, gaming buddies on the internet.、Uh, I, I I can say that we've、uh, slew a lot of demons and killed a lot of dragons together. But that's the kind of geek talk that only those of us who play games would really understand how meaningful that really is.、Uh, but anyway, talking about my friend Richard.、Uh, Hopefully you're watching this.、Uh, Richard and I we've known each other for、uh, almost thirteen, fourteen years, right now. And one thing that we have in our friendship, one little tradition that we observe, is every year we send each other a knife or a sword or a new weapon because we are both collectors and we're both into this kind of stuff. So.、Um, I would send him one, and he would send me one, and we never really know what we're going to get in the mail, and it's always kind of a fun surprise. So the other day, I went to check my mail and found this new axe. It's actually a tomahawk,、um, leaning against my mailbox, and that's my、uh, my share of the gift this time around. So today I'm going to give you guys a quick look at this、uh, little deadly weapon, and talk a little bit about it. And then I'm going to show you guys something that a lot of you guys probably never knew that I know how to do,、uh, and I definitely don't know how to do it in, on an expert level, but I do know some stuff that I can share. I'm going to show you guys how to use an axe or hatchet or tomahawk. In a self-defense or fighting scenario, okay, we're going to talk about axe fighting 101. But first, let's look at this guy. This is a Reaper tactical tomahawk with a 17-inch、uh, total length.、Uh, the handle or the shaft is made of a reinforced fiberglass nylon material. Really, really, really durable. This is. Actually, better than wood, because this thing is almost indestructible. Okay, the it comes with a sheath, as you guys can see, or a holster that can be there's a belt loop on it, and it is made of a、uh, ballistic weave, like a lot of、uh, machetes, machete sheaths are made of. Out of the sheath, you can see that it has a CR13 steel. Uh, axe head that is,、um, I would say about eight inches wide, with a wicked spike on the one hand, on one end, and the other side is a regular、uh, axe blade that is about、uh, four inches long. It is a solid, solid, solid tool.、Uh, I have, I already have an axe.、Uh, it's a cold steel rifleman's tomahawk. But that's actually quite big, so I really enjoy this one. This little guy is uh, uh, light enough, and、uh, it has a holster to carry, so you can carry it on your belt and go camping.、Uh, and、uh, I enjoy this、uh, nylon reinforced uh, fiberglass uh, handle. It's a、uh, very solid.、Uh, feel really good in the hand. Now, one thing I will say about this tool is、uh, the material of the handle. Does make it a little bit slippery. So, if you are working with this, and you find yourself getting sweaty hand, and you're just it's slippery and turning in your hand, then you want to put some hockey tape and some duct tape or、uh, uh, cordage on the handle to stop that. Okay. Otherwise, this thing is going to、uh, slip and slide and turn in your hand, which is something that you don't want to have happen when you are using it to do. Hard labor, like chopping down a tree or whatever.、Uh, however, in the self-defense scenario, we actually wanted to be able to slide in our grip. I'll show you guys why in a little while. To honor our axe fighting episode, I got 
uh, the Canadian, what they said is the Canadian uniform, my old jean jacket on. Uh, this is very old. This jean jacket, I, I remember wearing this when I was in high school, and uh, it still fits today. That's pretty cool. Jean jacket goes with a tomahawk. Yeah, we got old and right combination. Now we just need a couple zombies so we can try this thing out. Now, getting to using an axe or a tomahawk or a hatchet for self-defense purpose. First and foremost, remember that the, this is made to be a tool, okay? And it, it, it's a great fighting implement, uh, I will say that, but it is primarily a tool. So always remember that it is not made uh, to be uh, a killing tool or a fighting tool first. It's made to be able to swing hard, swing repeatedly at something that is not fighting back. That is very important to remember. We'll talk a little bit more about that too. But why is it that uh, an, an axe, hatchet, Tomahawk, this kind of weapon, this kind of tool, why is it good for consideration for home defense, especially home defense? Well, I wouldn't say a regular a full-size uh, axe to be too good for home defense because uh, it requires a bit of reach, a little bit of clearing. You might end up damaging your furniture a little bit more than you can uh, damage your attacker. But something like this is only 17 inches long. So if I choke up on the handle and grab it halfway up the handle, then that shortens my reach even more. And let's, let's make it a very quick and efficient inside self-defense implement. So it is good for that. It's heavy. It's hard to get damaged. And if you know how to use it, it's perfectly lethal perfectly effective as a self-defense tool. Let me show you guys uh, on a, a thick cardboard box here. Okay. This cardboard box is really thick. So just to illustrate the force, let's say I take this steak knife, which is quite sharp, and stab this it takes quite a bit of force to go in, and the damage that it does is negligent, okay? But if I take my trusty Reaper Tactical Tomahawk, just look at the damage it does to the cardboard, okay, I, and that one-handed chop, that's not even with two hands, okay, so a tomahawk, an axe, a hatchet has the advantage of uh, packing a lot of punch, it packs a lot of force, uh, it really doesn't matter what the person is wearing, uh, jacket, thick jacket, bulletproof vest, whatever, Right? Even on things that it doesn't penetrate, it's going to break bones, it's going to uh, break something. So that is one reason why something like this is good for a tactical self-defense, especially home defense or car defense uh, situation. Now, for safety purpose, because I'm not in my training room, and I never know if the cat is going to suddenly appear out of nowhere. I'm going to keep the sheath on the axe as we go through some of our self-defense maneuver. Just so there's no uh, sudden nasty and very bloody incident happening on camera uh, and going to land me in trouble with the SPCA. Okay, this is something very important guys. If you're at home and you're uh, messing around with self-defense implement with your weapon collection, always keep in mind who might suddenly come out of nowhere, who might suddenly come into the room, come into the field of vision. Even though 
even if it's someone just walking behind you, okay? I have uh, heard of people injuring their partner, their children horribly by accident because they didn't realize that the person behind them on the swing back to cock the weapon over their shoulder and nail their partner right in the face, okay? Always be very careful. Unless you know you're in a room all by yourself, the door is closed and locked and bolted, no one's going to suddenly come into the room, okay? Unless you know that for sure, then be careful when you are messing around with these things, right? We don't want accident. So, yeah, that's why I'm keeping the, the sheath on the axe head. So this way, you know, nothing un, uh, unforeseen is going to happen. One thing to understand, we go back to what I said earlier. One thing to understand, using an axe type implement for self-defense or fighting is that this is primarily made for work. So... If something is just here, and I take the axe and bang, 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 I can go as hard as I want, as many times as I want, because it's not fighting back. But when you are faced with someone, or many someone, that might be armed with their own weapon, then you are dealing with a completely different situation. Okay, it's not like in the movie, okay, it's not like in the movie where you see the axe wielding person hold it and swing it and hold it and swing it and swing it and things just happen automatically in their favor, okay? Real people fight back. Real people are smart, okay? Might not be as smart as you or I, but might be smarter. Might not be as strong as you or I, but probably stronger. Might not be as fast as you or I, probably faster. Okay, there's always a probability and you want to account for that. So this is to say when you are working with an axe in a self-defense or fighting situation, you don't just swing, 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 swing. Okay, as tempting as that is, you are going to miss your target. You are going to hurt yourself. Let me give you a quick illustration how you are going to hurt yourself. Okay. Remember, now a lot of axes are different, but you want to remember there's something on the back of the axe. One side is the axe blade, the other side is the spike, right? So something like this tomahawk, if I just swing, 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 I see how this spike to come back and hit myself in the neck. I'm going to hit myself in the, in the face when I get carried away with my swing, all right? So remember that there's a front, there's a back. Both sides are very dangerous, okay? So you don't want to swing and retract blindly, right? So you might hurt yourself, you might miss your target, you give them an opportunity, and also, if you just swing, 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 it's going, you're going to run out of energy within 30 swings, okay? And this is just swinging at empty air or a stationary target. Again, you're not dealing with someone who's constantly trying to crowd you and uh, not give you enough room to swing or put their hand on your weapon, trying to take it away from you. Okay, so there's a lot to be considered why this is not made to be a weapon. This is a tool first, weapon second. But that's okay. Machetes are tool first, weapon second. But they are perfectly fine in self-defense scenario. So axes are too perfectly fine too. But you need to learn how to use them. Okay, it's not something that you can just grab out from under your bed and go after an intruder. Okay, you are, not everyone is like Conan the Barbarian. Not everyone is like Gimli the Dwarf in Lord of the Ring. We are not born axe fighters. Okay, so this is why I'm here. I'm here to show you. A few of the basic tricks on what you need to pay attention to when you use an axe type weapon or tool for self-defense. First order of business, you must decide two hand, one hand, two hand, one hand. I suggest you use two hand just because it uh, gives you more option 
and it gives you a uh, more reach, more control. Okay, but I'm going to show you guys a little bit of both. Let's start with two hands. First big principle of axe fighting, we're well, just going to call it axe fighting from now on because I, if I have to keep saying self-defense with the axe shape implement the tool, we're never going to finish the video. It's just going to be too long-winded. It is already. Okay, first thing in axe fighting, you never want to retract the way you went. So it's not like a stick. It's not like a knife. Okay. Even though it looks good for me to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It looked good for me to do that, you know, like basic knife fighting, stick fighting tactic. Okay, but it is not a stick. It is balanced different. It is not a knife. Okay. So you don't want to retract the way you you, you you went out. You don't you don't want to run the same track. Why is that? Because it is really obvious, okay? And you don't have a lot of edge to work with. And you don't have a lot of control. Uh, you will be fighting that inertia the whole time because it is a front loaded, heavy, heavy piece of tool. If I swing it and I have to retract it back. I have to fight against the momentum of it going the other direction. It's going to slow me down. A lot of people say X is slow. That is why. Because when you see people who don't know how to do this, they go swing this way, swing back this way, and already they're off balance, right? You don't do that. That's not how you do X fighting. Second, you want this thing to be live in your hand. You don't want it to be too loose and turning every which way, but you don't want to have a deft grip on it. And this is the same with knife, stick, anything, anything. Uh, you want this to be loose enough so you can slide your hand up and down, switch your grip wherever you want, but tight enough so when you make contact, it doesn't turn to the side, okay? So you want to be able to have a very balanced grip. Third, you want to learn to work with the momentum and change tactic on the spot. An ax is very, very, very dominating, not just to the enemy, but to the user, okay? You can't be fighting this ax the whole time. You have to go with it and work with what it's giving you, okay? You don't want to yank it around and yank it around and pull it around, okay? You're going to get really tired and you're going to get yourself off balance and you're going to be predictable. That is the worst part about some people who use axe in fighting or self-defense is they are predictable. They use it like a baseball bat, okay? It is not a baseball bat, even though it feels like one. For example, let me show you guys. If I swing from right to left and miss the target, always assume you're going to miss your target. Because if you assume you're going to hit them and you miss them, you're going to be off balance. You're going to be unpleasantly surprised, okay? I swing right to left and miss my target. My target already know what most likely is going to happen if I'm going to swing back, right? So all they have to do is take one step in and put their hand on the handle of the axe, and now I am stuck. You know, this is a bad situation because if they latch onto the shaft near the head, there's nothing I can do with them. There's not no way for me to pry this out of their hand, okay? Especially if they're crowding me, okay? So, in this case, first thing I'm going to show you guys, when I throw a wide swing, wide swings are okay, but remember, grip nice and relaxed on the handle, be ready to change. Because when I swing from right to left, big axe swing, right to left, like this, 
I, I missed my target. I'm not going to come back to the right, okay? I'm going to assume the person know a little bit about fighting. I'm going to assume that they are dangerous, which means I'm going to change tactic by going with momentum. I swing right to left as I reach the arc of my swing. Here is something to watch out for. You do not want this to come and hit yourself on the forearm, okay? You want to have control of this, right? So I swing right to left, avoiding myself on the forearm. I want this axe to go under my arm. So I'm letting go of my inside hand, which is my left hand because I'm right-handed. So my right hand is in the front, uh, higher up on the grip. I let go of my left hand. My left hand bypasses my right hand and grab near the head. And from here, I'm going to punch straight forward so the spike go right into the person, okay? So I'm not coming back to the right. I'm punching straight in with the axe. As I punch in, my right hand is already here, ready to take this axe and turn it. And now we come from up to down, okay? That's three strokes in succession. Right to left, across, punch forward and down, okay? That is bisecting, impaling and skull cleaving. Three quick succession. You are going with the momentum of the ax. We are not fighting it. We are not going like right and left and up. Okay? Way too much energy. Right to left, punch forward and down. Right? Let this thing be alive in your hand. Let it move in your grip. Go with the momentum. There's a lot of other forms we can go through, but I don't want to stay here all night and just talking about different combos, different forms. But this is basically uh, the same. Let me show you guys. Let's say I start with an overhand, overhead, two-handed, up to down, and again, I miss my target. Most people are going to assume I'm going to lift it up again and try this again, because that's what they see, you see in movies. Now here is another thing to caution yourself on, is when you do this big overhead swing, you swing down, you want to watch out, it doesn't go down too far, because it's going to hit yourself right in the groin or in the leg, you're going to kill yourself. Okay, so always swing, but make sure you start cutting the power by the time you get to your belly button, it's like using a sledgehammer. Okay, so. Same principle. I do not want to retract back the way it come, and I do not want to fight the momentum. So when I do an overhand up to down with both hands, I'm going to step in, step in when I miss my target. The axe is going to rotate in my hand and whip back across. Okay, that is an overhand cut, whip back across. Overhand whips. I can either hit them with the spike side or the axe side on that whipping back across, right? So that is overhead, whip back across, and then overhead again. Now there's one, two, one, okay? It's no, it's no slower than any kind of two-handed sword. Don't let people tell you that an axe or hatchet or this kind of thing is slower than uh, a samurai katana. It is not. If it's slower, it means you don't know how to use it. That's, it. That's all. Another example of how you want to utilize an axe effectively. Let's take our overhand cut downward. Again, missing the target. This time, when I cut down and miss my target, rather than whipping it out to the side, I'm going to let go of my front hand and grab it overhand and whip the shaft around, okay? Remember an axe is not just a weapon on the blade or the spike. The shaft is perfectly fine as a weapon, okay? 
So when I deliver the cut, a miss, I turn to the side and whip the shaft down at the person, either at the shoulder, the collarbone, or the leg. And then I retract the axe into the other hand and then wind up for another cut. I'm never fighting the momentum. I'm going with the momentum. I never retract. I'm always changing direction. What if the person, what if the person has friends and you are gained up by several people and you don't have a lot of swing room? Okay, this is where you want to learn how to do this one hand, one handed. Because when you are gained up by people, you might not have the room to wind up for a two handed cut. But remember, the axe blade, especially the hooking back part, is very sharp. So I don't need to use this as a, like an axe. I can use this as a knife if I want to. So what I would do, if I'm ganged out by two people or three people, and I need to turn to defend myself against someone else in the middle of a conflict, I'm just going to let go with one hand, slide my uh, control hand, my dominant hand, up to close to the head of the axe. I'm going to lay the shaft of the axe along against my forearm so I have better control of it and it's not going to get hung up by something. I do not want my opponent to grab it. Okay, so when I turn, I'm going to just turn and whip this across and down, leading with my axe head, okay, but close to my hand. It's just like turning and leading with your elbow. In this case, I'm leading with the axe head, okay. Someone grab me from behind, right? Someone grab me from behind. When I'm using the axe, am I going to start to try to swing back like this? No, because if I miss them, I'm going to hit myself with a spike, okay? What I'm going to do instead, if someone suddenly grab me from behind, again, I'm going to slide my hand up to the axe head and whip the head right back into the groin, right? Remember, the whole axe has to be your weapon. The whole axe has to be under your control. You have to work with it. It has to be your best friend. You have, it has to be as slick, as flowing as water. You can't be fighting this brutal instrument the whole time. Now let's look at one-handed form. Let's say I decide for some reason to use only one hand. Maybe my other hand got uh, injured for some reason. So when you're working this one-handed, you want to grab as close to the head as possible while still swinging comfortably. You want to hide the shaft, the extra bit of shaft, either against your own armpit, your own bicep, your forearm. You want to hide this there. You don't want this to be poking, swinging around because someone's going to grab it and if, look at this, if I'm fighting with this, if I'm fighting with the axe in one hand and someone suddenly snag my handle, suddenly they can push it back and the blade is right in my face, okay? Always pay attention to the butt end of the shaft. You want to tuck it out of the way along your forearm. Uh, you can use that for blocking, okay? If someone comes, at me with a knife, if uh, someone comes with me with a sword or machete, do I want to hold the axe in both hands and try to block it? No, because I'm not going to be as quick as they are. Okay, this is again not an implement made for fighting, this is a tool. So, if someone comes at me with a knife or a sword and they're trying to cut me, I'm going to choke up on the axe near the head and then lay the shaft along my forearm and use this to block. Use this to block, and then as soon as I can catch one of this stroke on the axe handle, then I whip the head right down at the forearm, take off the arm. Okay, no more problem. Okay, now when you use a one-handed form for axe fighting, 
remember, you do not want to hold it near the end. Because you're just you're never going to be able to control this. Always hold near the head, hide the shaft, you know, guard the shaft. And remember, you can slash, you can chop, you can hook, you can chop across the other way, you can use the spike to punch, you can use the spike to punch this way, punch this way, okay? Make sure you retract, you don't hit yourself with the blade of the axe. Again, this have to be, this have to be nice and relaxed in your hand. Punch, cut, 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 cut. Punch, right? Punch down into the leg and cut right into the center torso and hook up into the center torso. Block with a shaft, okay? Block with the shaft and whip around, cut at the arm. It has to be this loose in your hand so you can work with it. You can move with it, okay? For a smaller uh, acts like this. You can also grab it in reverse. Okay. When would I do this? Well, let's say I don't want to kill the person. Let's say I don't want to kill the person. Or for some reason that we are in a situation where I am uh, at the risk of losing control of this axe. I'm going to turn it around and wrap my hand around the head of the axe like this, okay, like this. If a little bit hard to see with the sheath on, but with the if I have the axe out of the sheath, um, you guys will see that it fits perfectly in my palm, and I hold it this way. It's not going to cut me. And it gave me a lot of options for punching sideways, punching back, backhand with a blade and spike, and then whipping this shaft using basic stick fighting tactic, okay? So you give me a close-up bladed option and a long range, long range stick or club option. In the end, while well, there's a lot, really a lot more to axe fighting, like I said, I'm not even at the expert level. Not I'm nowhere as good at it as I am with knives or sword uh, or even spear. But axe fighting come down to you and your axe have to be like dance partners. You want to work with each other. You don't want to fight against each other. And you don't want to do any kind of big backtrack or backswing because that's going to just throw you off balance and it's predictable, and it's going to slow you down. You want to sink quick on your feet, change angle at any time of the uh, conflict. Your hands have to be able to switch grip, switch grip, slide up and down, switch position on the shaft, switch side, switch side, twist, switch, pull back, parry with the handle, Spin the axe out, hook back, okay? So you don't want to get locked into a two-handed or one-handed pattern. Your hands have to be nice and relaxed and ready to change angle on the axe shaft and even on the head of the axe. Thank you for checking out today's Tactical Tuesday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Wisdom Wednesday. But now, have a good night.